exhibited his newfound ability to dominate from mountain to rear mount. He's always been, been very, very powerful in, uh, uh, in gi grappling. Um, but a year of solid no gi grappling gave him a pressure game. Nicholas was always a movement oriented uh, player. And uh, in this last year, he's been focusing a lot on the idea of nullifying an opponent's movement through pressure. And so yesterday you got to see a combination of his movement ability at distance and his ability to work with pressure at very close range. And that's what we're looking to, to work with again today. Um, also some just very small refinements on his strangulation technique. Obviously he's already a very strong strang uh, 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 in use of strangle holds to begin with, but just a few little additions made for some very impressive strangle work yesterday. There's like little moments where you can see he's kind of camping in positions just where he's relaxed and he's putting a lot of pressure on his opponent. Is that a yes. specific thing that you yes. guys are... That, that's a, obviously a big part of what we do in, in, in the sport. Is we try to create what we call asymmetric work rates between ourselves and our opponents so that uh, we're doing significantly less work in a given position than the other guy is. And over time this has very, very noticeable effects. It's a, it's a difficult thing to contend with when you're on the other side of it. Um, Nicholas has made tremendous progress with this in Logi grappling and it was very, very impressive to watch him apply it to the gi scene as well. Um, you'll notice that yesterday all of his finishes came out of mount and rear mount positions. So there's this emphasis on getting to those two positions above all others and pressure is the way he's doing it. But he's not just playing a pressure game, he's still keeping what I think was best about Nicholas's game early, which is his movement ability. But on the outside, he's still the same old Nicholas Marigali. Beautiful movement side to side, um, but then combining that with getting two pressure positions, mount and rear mount, I think this can significantly add to his game. But by and large, everything we wanted to do has been sorted out before we get here. And then it's just a matter of applying it. So uh, unless something really radical happens on the first day, usually physical in nature, uh, there's not a lot of change from day one to day two. Uh, the only thing that would change this is if there was some kind of crazy injury or there's a, a very there's an opponent who's completely different on the second day to what you faced before on the first day. This is the, the, the second biggest event of the year. Everybody's good here. There's, there's no weak players in this uh, in, in this tournament. Um, just to get in here, you have to be one of the absolute best in the world. So uh, obviously it's a very tough weight bracket. Um, Nicholas has a bunch of fights in fairly short order. And then of course hanging over his head there's the whole open weight final after that. So uh, he'll have to stay focused match by match. Um, one problem that often afflicts athletes in these situations is they think what's coming next, what's coming next. The matches are not won by what's coming next, they're won by what's happening here and now, second to second. So it's got to stay focused on this and, uh, and work its way through step by step to the end of the day. One last question: Did you bust out the special uh, match guard for this for the final set? <laughs> this one was given to me by a generous student. He makes his own rash guards, and uh, I like to support my students and, and wear their stuff. Stay behind the elbows, good. Make his chest face to see it now. 
two hand lapel feet. fucking sport. First match, got a submission. How do you feel, Nicholas? I feel good. So, that was uh, the goal for this first match. Make the match a little longer. Just to feel my breathe, my cardio, the grips, like put the, the body in movement for the whole day of competition. So that was the plan and we got it. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, I think you got Roosevelt next. What do you think yes, about I do. Roosevelt is a very strong competitor. I think he never won a major title, but he's always there. Like second place, third place, he's always doing wars against everybody. So definitely he's a tough competitor. I think I have one hour between the mats. So I have time to rest, breathe a little bit, a bit, drink some water and then get in the zone again for competing. Right. So that's the plan. How do you think Operation Save the Sports going so far? Man, so how is the Pan Ams this time when Nicolas Maragalli shows up? I mean, it's hard, but Definitely we can make some huge impact inside the sport. And like me or not, I can bring some entertainment to the gear world. And I'm this guy. So let's see what we can do for the upcoming two years.
so terrible in the half a guard. Yeah. Yeah. Good example of the gentleman's life. It didn't start so well. <laughs> uh, I was like on focus because he pulled guard. I wasn't expecting that. And then he got it under. I got jump on a leg drag, but I wasn't like so focused on the media, like so so warm, so uh, uh, paying so much attention. And then he scrambled. He got on top. He got half guard. He was trying to take my back, but I knew. I mean. He's not, he's not a bad fighter, that is not what I'm saying, but my uh, defensive game is, is also incredible and I knew I would escape, so I exposed my arm because he had his hip in a wrong position to try some Kimura transition to armbar, and then I just exposed my hip, come on top, control the collar, first I control the collar and then I come on top, and it was easy, escaping a new like pressure over time, always open doors. That was what I did, so I got first half guard, I used my, my shoulder to put a pressure on, on his neck. So he tried to bridge to both sides, he's super strong. Like maybe he's 20 or 30 pounds heavier than me. So I lost my pressure, but I instead then try and move forward and move backwards. I rebuilt my pressure from half guard and I kept pressuring and it was an amazing match. Uh, so I love it to see the crowd like half of the crowd because I think the crowd is, is on my side in this one but half of the crowd chatting to see uh, 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 my opponent uh, uh, beat me and I think it's gonna be forever like if you are on the top how is we gonna have uh, uh, part of part of the fans willing to see you lose because they don't wanna uh, 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 they don't wanna uh, realize that you were so high inside this sport that no one is touching you and this is why we always have people trying to push the champion now and it's part of the work so i'm taking the risk showing up and i'm happy whatever the outcome is i'm happy winning or losing so i love doing this shit man so i'm just just blessed to be here so afterwards i saw you did you give your signature to the crowd or was it yes i did my signature Murigali. so beautiful jiu-jitsu is what i just showed right here in this match and the other ones so Building, building the pace, finding opportunities, always stepping uh, forward inside the match, progressing until we find submission, that was what I did. So I took the back perfectly. This time I, put, I placed both hooks in, and then I went straight to the choke. So, Morigali's signature, Michelangelo. <laughs> In third place, representing
And your 2023 adult male black coat ultra heavyweight champion is Nicholas Meragali, representing Enzo Gracie. Here's here's a key. Okay. And your 2023 adult male black coat ultra heavyweight champion, Nicholas Meragali, representing Enzo Gracie. So we have one more match, one more match to go, uh, I'm facing Eric in my open uh, class final and I'm happy. That, that The match was hard to start because I felt my, my mind wasn't there, you know when you feel like I was uh, falling asleep. But once we started, I made a few mistakes playing front guard, he, uh, yet, uh, so he used to be training partners and he used to train a lot so he knew what I was. Uh, uh, what kind of game I would play, so he avoid for 2-3 minutes and when I feel that low on the hips would be the best option because he's pretty, uh, pretty strong. So I got finish a match quickly. Uh, so it was a good, good, uh, good final. Become one of the greatest ever. That is my, that, that, that always was my dream. All right.
champion is Nicholas Meragalli, representing Enzo Gracie. Can you see that? He stayed for my chest. And now, he was biting my chest. Williams, I was doing some weird tap. He was biting my Thor. chest. Male, black belt, open class division. And in first place, the 2023 adult male, black belt, open class champion, Nicholas Meragalli, representing Enzo Gracie. Gracie Park and Arthur Jiu Jitsu as a position of 